So you start monster. You're going to spam the button to get into the truck. And usually two cop cars will spawn here, sometimes a SWAT van or two SWAT vans. And it's pretty random how they spawn, it's just kind of a luck thing. But luckily your truck gets repaired at the first marker, so it's not a huge issue if you get shot a bunch or something bad happens like that, it's not a big issue. Monster is another one of the missions where it's a lot about learning the road, or the off-road so to speak where all the bumps are and finding your route. I go to the right of those two trees, a lot of people go to the left. I feel like I can pick up more speed here and jump over this little gap. Failed to despawn some cars there. Didn't land very well to keep my momentum. You want to land kind of straight if you're taking that little jump there over the road. The monster truck has four wheel steering. By holding your handbrake button, it allows you to steer with the back wheels and the front wheels. So that can be helpful if you are completely turned around for some reason. Important to note here, do not despawn any cop cars as you're approaching this bridge because oftentimes they're going to spawn on the bridge if you do that and that is a whole mess there. Not a lot to say about driving the monster truck, just again you're going to learn after doing this a ton of times where all the bumps are in the road. Now right here, in between this marker and the next one, uh, you can see we don't go straight at it. We go to the left quite a bit so that we don't drop into that pit there and lose all of our momentum. Saves about a second, maybe a second and a half. Slow down as you approach this marker and come gracefully off that little jump there. And here we are going to stay to the right so that we can take a wider turn. If you were to stay on the path, you wouldn't be able to take a very wide turn and you'd have to hit the brakes quite a bit. So I go pretty far to the right there so that I can take a wide turn. Careful of those gas pumps. I like to stay out of the gas station completely. So we have four stars at this point because we did not complete the woozy chain of missions, which means we did not complete the mission Yay Kaboom Boom. Or is it yay yay kaboom boom? I don't know, I haven't played that mission in probably 30 years. So, uh, but that mission actually unlocks these bridges. So we don't have bridges unlocked to be in this area or Los Venturas. Uh, and something to note here, I guess, the way the community separates the sections, like we have Los Santos, Badlands, all that. It's a little blurry or muddy here, whether or not this is part of Los Venturas. Uh, a lot of people they'll add a fifth section and call it desert and that's what I'll do here. Desert is monster, hijack, verdant meadows, learning to fly and stow away. And then after that is your Lost Ventura section. Oh, I just realized I have Fender Ketchup twice. Uh, hold on, so here this jump, it, you're, you're memorizing where those rocks are there. The more times you play it, you're going to memorize where those rocks are. Uh, I forgot when I added Fender Ketchup, or when I added You've Had Your Chips Back, I just called it Fender Ketchup again because I'm a moron. But uh, that's because normally I was duping explosive situation. I don't do that anymore. I will explain how that works in this tutorial. But I don't do that in my runs, and I think you shouldn't either until you get probably a sub 420. Because otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that more when we get there, but that's an inconsistent dupe. So here, this fence here, you can break this fence. A lot of times it'll put your truck on your back, so I just don't do it. I, I I can't believe I missed the marker. Back up into it. As long as you're getting, I believe it's a sub 530. Okay. You're okay. Boss was right about you. Boss will be in touch. So here we're gonna death warp. Uh, due to some of the duping and the all mission zero calls and things like that, we're gonna keep all of our weapons and spawn back at the San Fierro Hospital. I blow the truck up because a lot of times you have armor there. I turn the camera behind me as I run so these ambulances have a chance to spawn. We get in an ambulance, and we are going to take the phone call to unlock the next mission, which is hijack. But then we need a phone call to dupe hijack. And to get that phone call, we buy zero, which um, we have enough money for. We have 
the right amount of money to do all this stuff. So here we're just driving over to zero. We take the phone call. And we take the ambulance here. If you if you have a taxi or something, that's good too. But we want something that'll set our on mission value timer. So we take the phone call. Now, if you purchase the property and press your get in vehicle button, uh, pretty much one after another, you can actually get into the ambulance after buying the property during the cutscene. So here we are going to set up an on mission zero phone call, and to do that, we'll use paramedic. We start paramedic turn it off right around 210 so it'll be up at 225 the phone will ring yeah I'm gonna park my car to exit and pause buffer at 225 so once again we are holding the phone call before the mission ends and we're not actually going straight to hijack we need to get some uh, driving skill and this is the most convenient kind of on the way time to do it so we're gonna do that right now we're gonna go to driving school which is the S on the map going into this building or possibly actually starting the driving school lessons uh, is gonna despawn your vehicle so don't worry about parking it in such a way that you, you're gonna get out of there this whole time we're holding tab so again if it's really hard for you to do to do these driving schools while holding tab you can do driving school first and then get your on mission zero call that's totally up to you but this is more efficient this way so this is a gimme you do need to get two golds at least um, so we'll get two golds and to get a gold it's hundred percent now this one is hard for a lot of people to get on the first try every time I'd say the main trick the main tip is to not pay too much attention to the timer on the right pay more attention to your um, your ending position that's what's going to give you trouble and going to keep you from getting 100 percent so we try to get centered and get pretty far back into this parking space like so it wasn't even that centered all right and then i play a replay there hopefully we can get a good vehicle we're going back to the squallow a taxi would have been a good vehicle. Blade, all right. Not bad. Sometimes you can get a Sanchez there. Depends on what replay you're using, I suppose. You could get a Sultan. Or not a Sultan, an FZR or a PCJ or some motorcycle. Otherwise, we're just going to the Squallow. We're going to start hijack. A duping hijack is a an in-cutscene dupe. So that means we are not going to have... Uh, a whole lot of cops. Even though we're going to have four stars, the only cops that are going to spawn, the, the ones immediately around the building are going to stay spawned, or immediately around the area where you start the mission. And it can spawn helicopters once in a while. But that's not a real issue. You can play a replay and it'll despawn those helicopters. Now, because the bridges are closed, uh, an integral part of this mission is escorting Caesar. Not escorting him, but basically he's a package. You're delivering him. And you have to use the bike that the game gives you, and it's kind of hard to get back over. M Toms has some good guides on how to get over some of the slower bridges for newer players, but I'll be showing you the pretty much consistent way to get over the actual, over the faster bridge. Wow, that was pretty sick. So we're going to let go of tab during the fade, wait just about a half second, and then start spamming the let go of call button, actually holding it down, the, uh, the skip phone call button that is. You need to get on the motorcycle on the left. I recommend not moving until you see Caesar get on the bike. Otherwise, he can run around in circles and get blown up by that car that sometimes is upside down. So here, this is the fastest bridge to go over. There are three bridges you can go over. This one, uh, the one in the middle, which really isn't any easier than this one. So I, I'll just disregard that completely. And then the one that's in... Well, no, that's the one M. Toms has the guide for. I guess we'll show that. Now, see there, you just get lined up with that red rail a little bit offset to the right. Uh, and you just press A or D. You can lean back a little bit if you're egregiously off center. You just tap lean back while you do it. Here, we're going to try to pop a 180 there as quickly as possible. You know, line up like this and just lean back, hold D and lean back and reverse 
Now that's something that's going to take a lot of practice. You don't actually have to dupe to practice this. You can just use uh, Ghost Town, Cheat, and Never Wanted Cheat, and just practice this over and over at your leisure using a save file. There are other guides that are more in-depth, but basically what you do is you lean back, you get an angle, uh, kind of a sharp angle like that, and you hold left, I'm sorry, right, which is D, and lean back and reverse, and you should be good to go. That is the safest way of doing that. So here to get back to San Fierro, you have two options here. You can go for the jump into the airport, which saves a little bit of time. I think I try for it here. Ooh, I actually do. Oh, it's clean. It's so clean. How did... What? Okay. Uh, if an NPC falls off your vehicle and you don't, you do have to get off and then back on for them to get on. So I got gypped a little bit there. The other route is to just follow the road on the left, which I will show here. But otherwise, we're just driving. Are you kidding me? I'm actually that bad. Alright, so definitely need my last brain cell or something. What is going on? Ruined ruined all the sanctity of that clean airport jump with, with all this all this junk here. It would have been fast to go the other way at this point. So here we are gonna go right up onto the highway, the elevated road here. And drive on the left. Uh, by the way, my camera is zoomed in one notch to, I believe this is the default camera, to make that, uh, to make lining up a little easier to get onto the first bridge, onto that right, that red rail. Just driving to the red marker, that blue marker is for T-Bone Mendez, that, it's just going to be there forever. Here we're going to pop a 180, try to match speed with the truck as quickly as possible. As soon as you see hold this position, you can start pause buffering. And once the camera sort of locks and your bike gets reset, which it just did, you can let go of the pause buffer. That's something you're just going to notice. And then it's about 10 or 11 seconds after Caesar jumps that the, the uh, truck actually stops. So we can use that timing to kind of meet the truck right where it's going to stop there. Uh, some people will go to the left here. I actually go to the right on the road. Some people go over the railroad tracks. Okay, I suppose it's a bit more the direct, garage. but it's not something I'm good at for sure. Fade skip into the marker, and that is the end of Hijack. And of course, we will show you the other bridges. Other ways to do that mission. So, I wanted to go more in detail about how to do this bridge. So, as you can see, the lineup here, I am lined up with the red rail slightly to the right, kind of offset to the right. This is because the bridge tends to push you over to the left when you fall down onto this rail. So, we lean, we, we face a little bit more to the right, but we are trying to be perfectly parallel with this red mark. And you can also see I'm not going to lean back when we start to drive off. I steer with just A and D. Sometimes you can press the lean back button if you are egregiously off-centered. Just tapping it though, and that'll get you realigned. You get more control if you lean back and your front wheel isn't touching the ground. So then we drive across the bridge, and you'll see here exactly how we line up this back wheel. You see here how the red barrel and the red bar on the right, the support beam for the bridge, sort of lay out where the invisible wall actually is. That's where you're going to want to put your wheel. And you can see here I don't have much angle, but I have some angle. We're not trying to go straight back into it. We're not coming at a 45 degree. It's more like a 12 and a half degree angle. Then you can just roll forward off a little bit if you need to get speed again. So you roll forward off a little bit, drive in reverse, lean back, lean to the right, and you'll be able to get on there. That is something that's going to take practice, but you'll be able to do it. So the next bridge you can go over, which is a bit slower, but uh, a little bit more new player friendly, is what I call the M. Toms Bridge. And we'll throw it over to the gold Rocket League player himself, M. Toms. Um, so I just started tinkering around. I'm not gonna get that. I found out you can just kind of ramp up on the side here pretty easily like that and land up here you kind of want to hit it at an angle um. so as you can see the route is very much similar you just have to drive past the first bridge that I just showed you and then you're at the next bridge and I'll admit this took me a few tries uh, I failed this about five tries but then I got it and it seems 
pretty easy if you can get it in five tries watching one video. And M. Toms goes on to say the great thing about this is you don't have trouble getting off the bridge uh, as long as you have the right number of uh, brain cells, which I don't clearly, but you just go off and then you're on dry land. So easy enough. And then you just follow this road to pick up the other route, same thing. And the final bridge is the one in downtown Las Venturas. So as you can see, there is a lot, a lot, a lot more driving to do this route. You're driving all the way into Las Venturas, so this is much, much slower. It's also actually not that much easier if you're using keyboard and mouse. Back when I used controller, this was very easy because you could make subtle adjustments with the joysticks rather than having to press A or D, which uh, would be binary inputs. You're either pressing them or you're not. There's no subtle gradients. But basically, you get to the Randolph Industrial Estate, and you're just going to carefully drive across this bridge here. The reason this is a bit easier, generally speaking, is there are no invisible walls to get around. You're just driving on a tightrope, more or less. And again, this is much, much easier if you are not using keyboard and mouse, if you're using controller. I remember this being way easier than it is now. <laughs> But then as you can see, we go on to dry land. Again, very easy. No barriers to drive around. And once again, you drive around this road. You drive on this road to pick up the other route once again. So this maybe didn't need to be tutorial tutorialized in addition to the other route. But this is what you would do if you're not taking that airport jump. Which is your prerogative. Very sensible choice to make. Uh, there's not much to explain here. You're just driving this road and it meets up with the other road that uh, has the entrance to the overpass, the freeway, highway, whatever you want to call it. Same deal here. We just go back up onto the overpass or highway and finish the mission. Same thing. So now this is Verdant Meadows. This is a cutscene that counts as a mission. So we're gonna dupe it. We're gonna use our motorcycle, our police motorcycle that we saved from earlier because we also want to use do the on mission zero, uh, the timing here where you start vigilante and stop it to set your timer. But also because we're gonna do something called the zero star glitch. Basically what happens is we do vigilante and we enter a enter a plane ride at the same time uh, during Vigilante, which isn't supposed to happen. Then when we fail Vigilante, it's going to give us control of CJ again. And at that point, we can blow up the plane so we never get off of the plane ride, basically. The game thinks we're always on that plane ride. One of the characteristics of that plane ride is that you're always supposed to have zero stars. So even though we're in an area where we're not allowed to do... We're not allowed to have a wanted level or we're not allowed to be, and we should therefore get a four-star one level, the game will think we're always on that plane ride, so therefore it overrides it and constantly sets our one level back to zero rather than four stars. It'll make more sense when you see it in action. So we're holding an on-mission zero call. We're going to start Vigilante. Gonna keep the call held, and by getting off of the motorcycle, we set our timer to the one minute mark. Get in a vehicle. You could also drive up to the road if you're not good at this, if, if this timing seems a little tight to you. You can drive up to the road. You can even drive halfway to the, to the uh, airport if you wanted, and that will make the timing a little more lenient. We're still holding the call because we want to be able to enter the marker and then have the call held. We wanna enter the airport and then have the call held so you'll see I'll let go of the call here. Let go there at about 35 on the right. Not that it's it's pretty much arbitrary. You're not setting up any timing here um, that you need to be wary of. Just that you need to be able to get in here and you need the phone to ring again. I pulled out my AK before I entered the marker. So now we're holding tab. Press skip. Uh, don't press skip before your timer says, I don't know, 15 seconds. 
skip again right around the four or three second mark there at the bottom to the landing sequence. You can see I have control again because I failed vigilante. And we're holding tabs, so we're constantly shooting. We're gonna blow up this plane. Walk to the left so you have a bigger canvas uh, as the side of the plane to shoot at. And we're gonna crouch to make our aiming more accurate. Usually about two clips will do it, maybe a little more. As soon as you see the black smoke, you know you are geared. That plane is gonna explode, awesome. So now that plane ride never ends that we just paid a ticket for. We paid for a ticket to get on that plane ride. It's never gonna end. Technically, we're still on that plane ride. We're still holding a call as well, which is gonna be helpful for duping Verdant Meadows. Now there's no marker for Verdant Meadows, but it's in the same spot Monster and Hijack started. So we're gonna fly northwest, slightly more north and west, I suppose. Uh, uh, along Torino's house there's actually a large area that you can land the plane. A couple choices for landing the plane. You can either land the plane and face it, you know, turn it around so that you can take off no problem, or you can land facing his house and then break obstacles in the way with your shotgun to then uh, make it out, m make your takeoff more direct towards the next marker. You use landmarks on the way to kind of gauge which direction you need to go to get to Torino's house. Here we're going to slow down, we're going to pull out the landing gear. Slow down a little early there, didn't need to slow down quite so soon. I like to try to use the plane to break the fences here. And some of these telephone poles, as many as I can. And now we're in a rough spot because that fence on the right didn't break. I should have just ran into it there to try to break it. Yeah, because now we're sort of on a pivot that we don't want to be on. This is kind of a disaster of landing, but it works out. Face the correct way. I'm going to enter the marker there just at the bottom of that porch. Gonna let go of the call once we see the cutscene load in, and we're gonna tap the let go skip call button. The cutscene will start again. You'll see our rubber band here. I like to run through the house. Uh, no, 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 because we're breaking stuff. We run to this side. Gonna use the shotgun and crouch. And that should be enough. Just those few fences. And we can take off seamlessly straight towards the airstrip, which is the plane marker on the map. Learning to fly. Now be careful here, if you go straight at the marker, you're going to go directly over area 69. And you'll be shot by ground air missiles. So stay kind of far to the left. You can take one, maybe two shots, but you're definitely it's going to affect your flying. Here you want to jump out of the plane while you're still a little bit up in the air so that you don't go into stumble animation. That was pretty much flawless. You can purchase the property and jump at the same time. And that'll get you a little bit closer. You see the plane's actually rolling back. It's kind of interesting. So, flight school. Uh, I actually pull out my sniper rifle there. That's sometimes something I'll do. By pulling out the sniper rifle, you can... Um, you can use first person and it'll have the sniper scope. So you have a red dot on the center of your screen. Uh, while you're doing the destroy the targets lesson with the helicopter. Flight school, pretty boring. The most tedious part, I think, of practicing this section is having to go through flight school. You need to get 70% on every single challenge, at least. So all of them that require a landing we're going to get a pretty low score on somewhere right around 70% because we're not getting anywhere near the target zone, that red marker at the end. Just need to land somewhere on the runway. Circle airstrip, I always go uh, circle counterclockwise. Now I'm not sure that it matters for time. I think this is the, the way I see everybody go as well. Just something that's going to take practice. Usually this one you'll end right around 1 minute, maybe 59 seconds, maybe 61 seconds. Basically, you don't need to use the rudders at all uh, to get a 59 second. I've done it without rudders. 
I don't know that it really helps your speed all that much to use the rudder to turn. But just subtle adjustments. The, great, the shortest distance between two points, of course, is a straight line, so keep that in mind as you try to hit these markers. Alright, so this is the same thing, but now we're landing at the end. You should probably start slowing down before you hit that last marker so that you can turn in more straight for the landing rather than having to steer to the right to overcorrect. And there we go, another 75. Helicopter takeoff. On the takeoff, what you want to do is lean back. There you can see the, the red dot from the sniper scope. Very weird thing about this game. You're going to lean back because the marker is actually behind you, so you're going to lean back as you start to fly up and turn around and then lean forward as you start to fly up again. It's just here over the end of the runway, a little past the end of the runway. Land helicopter. We're going to lean forward. If you go too far forward, you'll actually start moving left or right. So we advise against that for sure. Here you're going to let off the forward momentum and even try to counteract it by leaning backwards to get yourself to land a little bit quicker on the runway. Destroy targets. This is one that gives people a lot of problems, myself included. Um, kind of gotten better at it recently, I think. Best thing to do is to kind of slow down as you get up here. You don't need to have full forward momentum. You don't need to go past the trucks. So as you can see, I didn't even go past the trucks, which is something I've just recently started doing. Just, it's just, you gotta use logic sometimes to kind of think, of what, what am I doing wrong? It's like, why am I going past the trucks every time? Here, these trucks are moving, so you kind of lead the shots a little bit. Just spam the heck out of them. If I take a long time, I'll go into the marker. If I take way too long to actually do the, the shooting. I'll actually go to the marker to make sure I pass on this attempt. Loop the loop. I just just do a loop to loop. There's not much not much advice to give here. I think I tend to lean down a little bit before I start my loop. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I don't do that and I'm just making stuff up. Muscle memory, man. All right. This is corkscrew, uh, barrel roll, I mean. A aileron, aileron roll. Here, I believe I lean to the... Am I ru I, which rudder do I hit? Q or E? I hit Q. I tap Q before I do my roll, because you actually come out more to the right after you roll. This is parachute on to target. You don't need to pull your parachute right when it says. It's going to tell you to pull your parachute very, very early. You don't need to do that. Uh, you can wait until you're through the clouds. I use the timer on the right as a reference. Right around the time it hits 23, I pull it. You want to be actually having your parachute out for the least amount of time possible. That's going to be the most efficient way to, to do this.
And again, we're not going for major points, so we'll just land on the outer ring. And here we jump over, and we start running to start stowaway, which is that red marker there. I like to take a phone call beforehand. It's absolutely, for the most part, necessary to do if you're doing an explosive situation dupe to take this phone call here. I just like to do it here. Just makes things a little bit more clean. Take the call and fall off of the plane when the red marker shows back up to cancel the put away phone call animation. There's a couple different ways to do stowaway. Basically, you're not allowed to shoot inside the plane. Um, you're, you're allowed to only if it hits uh, enemies. If it hits the plane, the plane blows up, your run is over, you lose the zero star glitch. So what we do is we slide up. I, this is the melee weapon. And as a matter of fact, we're just punching and kicking and stomping to get the parachute. The other option is to use the AK-47, which is admittedly faster, but it is more risky as well. Because if you miss your headshot, you're going to blow up the plane. So we'll show that here, but otherwise you're just going to slide, you're going to shoot the plane just before you exit, and then fall out. This is why we needed Hitman level skill. Here is the version using the AK-47 only and no punches or melee weapons. All right, so now we're just falling towards that red, uh, that yellow marker that's actually yellow. Uh, in case you guys didn't know that, that, that marker there at the top of the, the circle. And uh, if you're a GDQ, this would be a good time to take a donation. You're going to see on the right where my wanted level should be. It's going to keep popping up four stars and then going away immediately. The four stars never actually take effect, so they don't ruin a phone call timer or anything like that. Play a couple replays, try to get a good vehicle. More than anything, you want a taxi here. It's going to skip. What? That cop just got out of his car. Interesting. So you get a taxi, and as a matter of fact, the cabbie, which is this rounder one, is faster than the taxi. That cop just hijacked that, uh, he just jacked that other cop. Interesting. So, we're taking this route to the Four Dragons Casino to start Fender Ketchup. This is the no explosive situation dupe route. Uh, before we start, okay, I'm just going to roll here. And while I'm rolling, I'll tell you that before we start Don Piote. Oh my goodness, stop rolling. Before we start Don Piote, I'll show you the route with explosive situation, what the uh, ideal situation is. I believe Demetrius is the fastest runner. He has the fastest time with Fender Ketchup and uh, You've Had Your Chips, which is the mission after Exposed Situation that normally the S tier runners uh, are going to dupe, are going to skip by duping. So to skip this cutscene, you get a taxi or a cabbie, which is what we're driving now. You start the taxi right here, and then before you approach this road, you're going to hold down the button to cancel the submission. Just hold it down, and as you can see, the cutscene pretty much instantly skips. It'll kind of replay here for some reason, but it doesn't stop your momentum or anything like that. And we go and we start Fender Ketchup. You're not you're allowed to run on certain spots in this casino, not on this red carpet here. So we jump across it. Fender Ketchup. Hey, hey, who the fuck? Who are you? One timey, huh? You got any idea in that pea brain head of yours who the fuck I am? No. <laughs> Here we're doing handbrake turns to get the scare o meter, not to be confused with the spook o meter up. I think this is a convenient time to go pick up this armor if you choose that you want the armor. It's a bit of a time loss, but it's nice, especially if you're doing chips, which is the mission after explosive situation. That mission, there's a solid chance you could die there if you're if you don't play right. 
Or we're just doing left handbrake turns. So you start to handbrake turn to the left and then accelerate out of it. And that's going to get your boy scared pretty quickly. I've only recently started not duping explosive situations, so very much new territory for me. If you dupe it, that's one of the big advantages. You don't have to worry about traffic. Go back into the casino, start the mission. Don't play replays in interiors. It's a higher likelihood to crash the game. As you can see, I even have a split that says no fade skip FFS on intensive care because I have crashed the game during runs doing that. So we're driving towards the beige marker, the manila marker. And uh, yeah, traffic, like I said, I'm not used to dodging traffic, used to duping this mission. Cut through these trees across the highway once there's a gap in the cars into the red marker gonna get back in the car immediately and we're gonna drive down to the area with the big old truck do not let your truck blow up under any circumstances so if you do something like that where you you get your car on fire, make sure it's kind of far away before you get out. My goal here is to be able to get out, not move, and then get back in and pick up the dynamite. So that's why I readjust after breaking the dynamite. Here, I'll bounce off this pole and then align myself. Someone call security. Somehow it didn't break there. You have to go all the way over it. This last one, depending on how quick you are or how slow you are, it's going to be in different areas because it's moving on a, a track. Hey, you can't come down here. So it's very, see, see how that's on fire? I'm very scared of blowing my truck up even after collecting the fourth piece of dynamite. If your truck blows up, you lose. So if you do end up crushing that uh, forklift, it's important to drive kind of far away so that you don't blow up your truck. Weird that I was on the roof there. All right, get on the Sanchez. Uh, I'm trying to remember which route I took here. I go left or right. Okay, so this is the newer route to get out of here that keeps your Sanchez. It's kind of difficult. Uh, basically, you're, you're riding along a wall. I will say this. The, the two things that people seem to think that you need here, and they're wrong, is speed. You can see I barely have any speed there. You don't really need much speed at all. It's all about your angle. You do need some speed, but you don't have to be flying or anything. Alright, second try, not bad. Again, load the save, practice doing that over and over. You don't have to exit, you could jump back down, practice again, again, again. Second try, not bad. And you keep the Sanchez for the next mission, which is pretty dope, because otherwise you have to get something off the street. Otherwise, you're driving a burrito here, or a rumpo, which is pretty slow. So I think it's very important if you're having a lot of trouble with exposed situation exiting on the Sanchez that you know this alternate route. This is the route we have been using for a long, long time. You're going to get on the Sanchez, and instead of going left immediately, you're going to turn to the right. We're definitely not taking the way the game wants us to by following the markers. Definitely not. That's out of the question. So you're going to hug this wall area here up this ramp, jump off your bike here, switch to your rocket launcher or sniper rifle, and take these two guys out. Uh, you missed, and yeah, take them out. Cool. So then you're gonna run up, run to the gate, and then go at this angle here, so you're jumping downhill, which will, you know, in effect, give you more height, and that'll let you climb over that fence. You're gonna get in one of these vans out here, take one with a spoiler, those will be burritos rather than rumpos. 
Uh, the burritos are faster. And yeah, easy enough. Now you just finish the mission. You know, pretty much the same thing. You be careful with that. Get back on and head back over to the Four Dragons Casino to start. You've had your chips, which hopefully I edit. Uh, I overlay, overlay something that says you've had your chips instead of Fender Ketchup there. Uh, I'm playing a replay there to hopefully get a Sultan. If I could get a Sultan, I'd rather take it. Hey, we got one. And I'm trying to remember if this was before or after I learned recently where to park. Okay, so this is after. You can actually park on the opposite side of the street, like close to the Four Dragons. You don't have to park that far away. The reason we want the Sultan is because the Sultan is the fastest four-door vehicle. You need a four-door vehicle for Don Piote. So we get that. We set the time right now. As you can see, the next split says check time one to seven. Um, and that is to set the time to be correct for Black Project, a mission that is very far away, but there's no other time that's really convenient to save other than right before Don Piote. I just said it now because I was thinking about it. So we went ahead and saved. Ran up that circle for some reason. It's a good idea to save before, uh, exp uh, before you've had your chips, because if you don't have a Sultan now, you have a higher likelihood of spawning one after you've had your chips. If I don't get a Sultan here, I'll take uh, usually the Sanchez again, I think, for the most part. This is the route I saw Demetrius do. Again, like I said, he is, I believe, the fastest, has the fastest run with, uh, with this mission in it, with this mission not skipped. So we're just driving over to the warehouse, I think is what it called it. And as you can see, this is a zippy little car here, pretty quick. Can't get a one level here. It's not possible, zero star still. We jump over this fence, shoot a rocket at that little entryway there, and that will teleport us for some reason. So, we're gonna turn around, blam, shoot that, blam, shoot that. There we have to blow up the forklift and the machine at the same time. Same thing here, blow the guy up and the machine. Oh my gosh, don't miss that guy. And he shot my rocket. Oh my gosh, I almost died. So now we blow up two at a time, two at a time, one at a time, and one at a time, and one at a time. We'll go back through, we'll talk about that in slow-mo here. Exactly what happened there. So like I said the first time, you shoot a rocket to teleport in there, and now immediately we turn around to blow up the car behind us that has guys that are going to try to shoot us. So shoot this bottom right corner there. A guy is coming from down this hallway, which is why we shoot the side of that bookshelf type thing. Now you want to blow up one machine and kill that guy at the same time, so that's why we shoot that rocket there. Here we try to kill all three of those guys up there and blow up this machine and that guy. So we blow up one at a time, then one at a time. Now we try to shoot this guy as well. I don't know how I didn't kill him there, even watching it in slow-mo. Very important to kill that guy. As you can see, that shotgun destroys you. Then he shot my rocket, just amazing RNG. So we blew up one at a time, one at a time. Now we need to blow up two at a time and two at a time, and we do this very specifically because it's going to stop extra guys from spawning. If I were to blow up just one right now, more guys with auto shotguns would come. So instead we blow up two at a time and then two at a time. Then we blow up one at a time until we exit. Careful not to shoot those boxes and blow yourself up. And then you should be able to sprint out of the building before that car gets to you. So just remember one at a time, one at a time, two at a time, two at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Alright, now we're just driving back to the Four Dragons Casino to finish the mission. Hopefully breaking that down in slow motion helped. Um, it definitely helped me because I definitely did not have time to explain it in real time what was going on there. 
And it's pretty much the same route back to the four dragons. Here we try to drive around this median or even over it and break these fences. It's the most direct route to end this mission. And I try to do a weird little Tony Hawk trick to kind of turn my car around by bouncing off that palm tree. Did not work in the slightest. Hey Carl, how'd it go? Tell Woozy we'll be getting no more trouble with them counterfeit shit. Excellent audio editing there. Could have just done another take, but decided, ah, we'll just say, just say counterfeit chips. And so he said it, and then they were like, alright, we'll just splice that together. So the reason I keep parking the car over here is because this is, before when we used to do this section of the game with a helicopter, this is where we'd always park the helicopter so it didn't despawn. You could park right here, right by the save marker. Uh, I saved one more time. Why did I save? Wait, what? Okay, no reason for me to save four times here. Oh, health! I had low health. Actually, I'm a, a genius for saving there. So this is the route for explosive situation dupe. I do not recommend this dupe. You will see in this footage why I do not recommend this dupe. So we start by blocking the call after landing. To block the phone call from coming in, what you do is you hold aim and jump. This will make CJ block with his fists as if he were blocking combat. It'll also stop the call from coming in. This is so that it will be ready for you as soon as you get to bike school to get your on mission zero call before fender catch up, by the way. We just finished stowaway. And this is the most convenient time to get explosive situation dupe. Ideally, this is the only time you'll have to come here for explosive situation dupe. That's not always the case. We get out of the car and immediately start blocking the call again. And we let go of aim and jump as we enter the marker and then hold escape to pause buffer we'll get our on mission zero call and drive back to start fender catch up so starting fender catch up is going to look a little bit wonky Basically, we walk into the marker and let go a tab right around here, right when he says, hey. And now you can see there's markers on the map. We are on mission zero. This mission is going to look pretty much identical up until the end, so I'll speed this up as well. So as you can see here, we need to get out of the car and wait for our on mission zero phone call to come back in. Once it comes back in, we take it, we hold it down, and then enter the marker. Now we still have an on mission zero phone call that we can use to dupe explosive situation. On the way to start explosive situation, I do this whether I'm duping it or not, I look for a good vehicle along the way. ZR would be kind of good, but a bullet pulls up right behind, so we grab it. I'll also show you a better place to park your vehicles that you're saving for these missions. And that's just right here on this sidewalk. Much, much closer, easier. It's not going to despawn there. Way better. Duping this mission is very standard. You just enter the marker, wait for the cutscene to load, and then let go of the call. And then skip the cutscene. So as you can see, there is no traffic or anything like that, which is a bonus to duping this mission. The issue with duping this mission is there are two copies of everything that are going to load in here, including the truck that you use to break the boxes with the dynamite in them. Now sometimes, like you'll see here, they will just stay inside of each other and explode. What you're hoping for is for one to sort of eject. So as you can see, they're still just inside of each other, so I'll blow them up to fill the mission earlier so we can get our call timer back again. Starts at 17. 17.17 17 is the time when we failed the mission to get our on-mission zero call again. 
Now, unfortunately, we're already going to be losing time, just very slightly over if we had just done You've Had Your Chips. However, we are going to be losing time. And we're still not guaranteed that it's going to work on the second attempt. And surprise, surprise, we failed it again. Now, there are a lot of different things people will say affects whether this is successful or not. Some people say, you're not driving fast enough, or you're hitting the wrong side of the marker, or it's the wrong time of day, or your thermostat in your house is too hot. Like, people will say a whole bunch of random stuff that just seems to not be relevant. There's no concrete evidence of what works, what doesn't. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead here, but we failed this another five or six times before it actually worked. Sometimes it works on your first attempt. Granted, I will say the time that it did work, I was using a buffalo, one that people say works quite often. As you can see here, we're using a buffalo. And this is what it looks like when the car ejects, the dump truck ejects correctly. Now after that, we do the mission as normal. But, unfortunately, there are so many copies of assets, including the guys, the boxes, everything, that it gets a little unstable. Depending on how many times you've duped it, it'll get really unstable. And, as you'll see here, the game actually just full-on crashes before I can even finish the mission. So don't do this. Don't try to go for explosive situation dupe until you're getting, I would say, a sub-420. If Demetrius can get a 409 without duping it you can get a sub-420. Not to say that he's garbage or anything, because he's actually quite good. But yeah, not worth it when you're starting out. Definitely not worth it. Where's your safety gear? So if the time's already right, you can save four times for health. If, you know, something bad happened on chips, you can do that. So now the route to find Paul and Macker. The game expects you, I believe, to have a two-door car here, which is why this mission is kind of got a—it's kind of quirky because you're supposed to get to them with the two-door car, and then uh, or a motorcycle or something like that, and then you—but it doesn't provide you one, so that's kind of weird. Um, but generally, two-door cars are f faster for the most part. There's a lot that aren't faster than the Sultan, though. Just cutting left here, just along Bike School. Off-road here. And this is where you use the mini-map to kind of judge your angles on these off-roads. So you can meet this road here. Unlucky. Could have despawned it. The problem is because you keep getting four stars and it's taken away, it keeps getting taken away, there's a higher presence of police force. And SWAT vans, which could actually be helpful because they won't retaliate against you if you shoot them. So if you wanted to, you could... You could kill the driver of the SWAT trucks, because if you get in the SWAT truck, you get armor. Weird roll. Why did I do that? Alright. Man, I, I should probably have just re-recorded a Las Venturas section, but I didn't. <laughs> this route is a little bit quirky, though, but it's generally kind of the safest route, I guess, in terms of not having a lot of bumps. And here, as you go up this hill, you're going to be tempted to move to the right. Don't move to the right. There's kind of like a wall. Uh, I'll show you right here what I'm talking about. Right here, stay to the left. All right, what, what in the world is going on here? So you see on the right there, there's uh, right, right under the money there, there's kind of a wall. So you stay to the left. You avoid that. You can get, actually get up. Do not do a fade skip here to... Do not play a replay to skip fade because you can actually run into Paul and Macker, much like on tagging up turf. Uh, if you do it, aim to the left, but even then your car is going to fly away. If it's a very good replay fade skip, your car is just going to keep driving. So you let them get in. There's two ways to get down from here. There's this way, which is the safer, more kind of boring way. A little bit slower, probably. And then we'll show you the faster way. 
kind of more fun. Takes a little practice, but you know, not too hard. We can go check it out. A lot of off-road bumps there. Red marker. Switch to your rocket launcher and shoot at this. I believe this is a trust. Basically, the support beam there, and that'll kill everybody without killing Paul and Macker. Let them get in. Very similar route to get home from kind of the same way you got here. You're driving up this road to the east. And after this curve, you're going to go off road. They stay along this road. Left across the railroad tracks. Now, this big hill here that you're about to see me run right into, you actually want to take it an angle like that. Otherwise, you can crash into it as if it were a wall. But if you take it at an angle, you're not going to have that issue. Driving straight across the highway. Careful of that pole. Careful of these trees that spawn there. And the trick here is to take wide turns to keep a lot of momentum up with the Sultan. Which I kind of did there. This is actually more of a wall than it is a bunch of posts on the right side. So you can actually run into that to kind of maintain some of your speed. I don't want to damage my car though. It's already white smoking. I don't want to change cars. And alright, we're done with Don Piote. Hit the marker on the right side so your car doesn't despawn. Although they, that might not be accurate. That might be, again, from the helicopter days. Kind of a remnant. But it doesn't matter. We've got time to reposition it here. So this is the jump on Don Piote. Basically just driving straight here. Slightly to the left so you can clear the ledge there. And lean back and land beautifully. And you can see how that would be faster than driving down carefully. Because we're waiting for a phone call. So we'll go ahead and reposition our car. Now it's facing the right way as well. Leave the door open. I get off. I get on the back to cancel the phone call timer. It might actually be faster to just take it over there. Yeah, yeah, it didn't save time to do it that way. You'd rather just take it and then enter rather than trying to cancel the animation. No fade skip FFS. I crashed here consistently by trying to do a fade skip. So as you can see, we spawn right by the car now because we repositioned it. Okay. Again, that extra police force, you know, from having four stars keep appearing and disappearing. Turn right after the binko. Left into this parking lot. I try to do a little bit of a 180 here. But I missed the marker. After the cutscene, you're going to drive. You're going to drive left out of the parking lot. And up this road and take the first right. Now this is a bit of RNG. A little bit of luck. But you take the first right. You try to either run into this first ambulance or if it's very far up the road, far away, you could actually get out and snipe it. Uh, and that will trigger the game to put the... to choose which ambulance is correct. So here we go for the snipe because I'm very far away. So now out of the two red markers still left, I decide, hey, Sultan, new Sultan, not going to blow up. Not really a smart choice. I didn't have that much more driving to do. So you're going to drive up, and what you're looking for is an ambulance that is not moving. The correct ambulance that the Mafia have Johnny Sandako kept in is going to be not moving. So they're, they're both moving on the map right now. Until you get close, then one of them is going to stop. So we're hoping it's this one. It's not moving, but it could be at a red light, so we're not sure. We're going to get up to it. It looks like it stopped. Okay. Nope, it's moving. It's definitely moving. It's just stuck on a pole. Ah, darn. So, it's the other one. So, we're not going to ram it. We're going to leave it be. And we're going to go to the other ambulance, which hopefully is stopped. So, we guessed wrong. We got the bad RNG.
The other thing, uh, and in connection with them not moving, in case they're at a stoplight, you're not sure, is this really not moving or is it just not moving because they're at a stoplight? These guys will be wearing black shirts. If they're wearing blue shirts, you're at the wrong one. Headshot them both with the AK so they don't start driving away. Don't ram them or they'll start driving away. That's the best thing to do is to kind of sneak up on them. You don't exist in their eyes until you've actually affected them. So that's what you want to do. You want to park a little ways away like that. You can park right next to them as long as you don't touch them. And then uh, headshot them so they don't drive away. So now we're driving to the abattoir. Which is, uh, I believe, a British word for slaughterhouse. For anybody out there that doesn't speak proper British. Gonna break the fences, and we're pretty much there. We're at the abattoir. And take note of what time that the clock says when it loads you back into the game after this cutscene, because you have a one minute call, and the one minute starts immediately after this cutscene plays, and you see mission passed. So, right here it says 35, mission passed at 1335. So, the phone will ring again at 1435. Here we're going to try to get this motorcycle. Uh, I believe that's a BF though. It is. So this is actually probably not faster than just keeping the ambulance or getting a fast sports car or something like that. But, you know, it's not bad. Take the BF. We're going to drive over to bike school. You can stop and get a hot dog here. we got plenty of time, so we're going to do that. Although we had full health, so pretty pointless, but nothing else to do. So we got another 20 seconds. So park your bike or car right there, or if it's a motorcycle, you can actually bring it into the uh, building with you. Find out. For this one minute call, you can actually hold a silenced pistol or any weapon like this that makes you walk like this and just drop it after the minute goes by. So even wait till 36 to drop it. And then we pause buffer and we've got an all mission zero call. So if you have any submachine gun ammo, which you probably shouldn't, uh, you'll be firing it right now because you're holding tab. Got an all mission zero call. So now these next few cutscenes, whenever I skip a cutscene and want to start a mission on mission zero, I tend to skip with fire rather than sprint. I don't know that that makes a difference or if that's just a habit I've built up. But so we're going to enter the marker as soon as we see the cutscene load. We're going to let go of the call and press fire, which in our in our settings is left mouse button. So I'll let go of the tab and immediately press, and I'll immediately just click. And that'll skip the cutscene and put us on mission zero during the mission. And now we're not actually duping this mission. We are, that was just the most convenient time to pick up the phone call. The most efficient time. It's not convenient at all, but it's very efficient to pick up the call to dupe fish in a barrel, which is a cutscene. You are allowed to sprint in this interior. So I let go and click a couple times. And we're on mission zero. You can see markers on the map. We're good to go. So now we drive to the abattoir. Okay, boss man. Where to? I gotta get out of this game. Shit, my nose is pissing like a racehorse. <laughs> that is really good stuff. Drive faster, which please? Come on, come on, come on. What do you want, old lady? So you trying to get out? Yes, God, yes. I want to do something safe and legal and boring with people that like me and have a wife and some kids and get divorced and fight for weekend access like everybody else. Listen, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I'm just so tired of all this life and death bullshit. <laughs> oh, shit, shit's all down my damn shirt and everything. Uh, to my best shirt, too. Doesn't this shit look good on me? So because you have Rosie on the back of your bike, you actually can't do the speed glitch where you just tap forward, tap the lean forward button. So it might actually be faster to take a sports car here. Okay, Hard to say. I'm the boss. I am the boss. I'm the boss. I am the boss. So we're going to switch to our rocket launcher. Blow dudes up. Shit. They started a fire to keep us back. There must be an 
Can't sprint in here, so jumping and sliding is going to be your fastest movement. If you need armor, uh, in the room to the right there is armor. I believe I opt to skip armor. No, I don't. I definitely go for it. Let's get a slide weapon. Slide, grab the armor, turn around, and leave. Rocket launcher again. Shoot in that corridor. Guys spawning there. I actually shoot them before they're all the way ready to come out. Just a lot of rocket shots. Looking at the markers on the map. The uh, the little indicators that there's dudes. Don't know how I missed that guy twice. Oh. Okay. So then we slide on out of here. If you have full health and armor, you could do a satchel jump to jump over the boxes. Not really that helpful, but it kind of looks cool. So here, we're going to hold tab before we get on the motorcycle. I actually shot Rosie there a couple times. Maybe it's a good idea to wait until he gets near before you get back on. This is because I picked up a bunch of ammo in the abattoir. We're holding the call now because it means we're going to be able to... We're going to be able to have an on mission zero call still to go use for fish in a barrel. Alright, so you're just going to drive into the marker. If you have a motorcycle and you want to save it, all you have to do is park it here on the sidewalk. Or a little distance away and then get into a vehicle. Because basically the game is only going to save... It's only going to eat basically your most recently used vehicle, which in this case is going to be this elegant that we took. And it's going to preserve that motorcycle there. Cool, so now we have this. Still holding that on mission zero call. And we're going to use it to do fish in a barrel, which is a cutscene that counts as a mission in the mission chain. But, between passing the cutscene the first time and the second time, we're actually going to pause buffer for a long, long time so that we can grab the call again. I know, that's a little crazy, but it works. So there's going to be a lot of flashing images here for like a long time. This skips, I believe, free fall by duping this cutscene. So I let go, skip, and then start holding escape. And basically what happens is you need to be holding tab before the second instance of the cutscene passes. So we're not holding tab yet. We're listening and we're looking at the top left of the game for the phone call to come in. So I actually lost what I like to call the 50-50, and I wasn't holding, I wasn't in the game, I was still in the pause menu when I let go of escape, uh, and started holding tab. So all you have to do then is press escape and hold tab, real fast like that. Escape tab, escape tab. And again, we're going to start this mission. I get an automatic weapon out. We're going to start this mission and skip it with the fire button. And we shoot to skip the dialogue there of the phone call. It, it sounded like we took the phone call. We didn't. Don't worry about that. What the fuck you doing? But by shooting, we set the phone call timer again so that we can take it again. Brandy, God damn it. Get the brandy. So now we can do this now while we're waiting for Mad Dog to jump to try to commit uh, not living. So while we're waiting for that, we have the phone call because we canceled it already. We have the phone call timer back up. We can get it again holding tab so that we can just finish the mission from here.
plus if we accidentally fail or some glitch happens where Mad Dog just dies. We're already holding an on mission zero phone call. We don't have to drive back to bike school. We can just try this again. Time to take your sorry ass this is the route. Go over this bridge. Hang a left. Be careful of these poles here. I feel that, Mad Dog. Alright, now we're just on the highway. Staying on the right. Pretty straight shot to that beige marker there. Start saying tan, because I, I don't like the word beige. You come out from under this bridge or tunnel. Gonna break these fences. And drive into the red marker, making sure your call is held. And here you've got a choice for vehicle. You can either try to pull out, play a replay, see if you can get a good vehicle here. Uh, I did not. So I take the ambulance. Some people just immediately get out and take the ambulance. That works too. Either way, you're going to break this fence so you can get back onto the road. And we're driving to Misappropriation, which is a crash mission. I think in part one of this tutorial I said it's an O with a cigarette. It's, it's not. It's a C with, like lights on the top of a police car so here we're holding on on mission zero call uh we're gonna enter the red marker i try to block traffic here so we can maybe get a better car play a replay even see if we can get a better car you start misappropriation nice you got a buffalo that's sick dude start misappropriation again i'm gonna shoot the driver of this buffalo a pink buffalo i call it a buffalito if you don't get anything good there you just take the ambulance no problem Gonna drive to the plane. You're gonna drive back to the airstrip where there's a rustler always waiting for you. Which I believe, I'm not sure if that's just because you bought the airstrip or if it's because you finished flight school. I'm trying to remember which one unlocks that, but it doesn't really matter. We're just driving over to the rustler. You can crash into the side of this wall to slow you down quicker. And then get in the rustler, and you're gonna fly up to the actual sort of mission part here. Your goal is to try to land up here so you can take off again. You want to save this plane so you can use it again. Sometimes that's easier than others, depending on the wind or depending on uh, pretty much just the wind. Also, I guess your own mental state how triggered you are at this point. So what I like to do is I like to go around that big mountain there, fly over to the left, and then lose speed by going up to try to sort of pseudo stall the plane. And then kind of turn to the right. Lovely. Kind of slow, but, you know, it's there. A couple options here. You can either shoot these guys with a rocket launcher or... An AK. I use the rocket launcher here. Generally, I don't use the rocket launcher because then there's all this fire you have to worry about. Pick up the dossier. Now you have passed one instance of misappropriation. And another guy has picked up the dossier. So now we're just trying to kill guys. To make this a little easier. And as you can see, I've got a phone call. So I'm holding tab, killing these guys. Kill this last guy and pick up the dossier very quickly. Now, if his body despawns, or a body really near his body despawns, generally, it'll say the dossier was blown up in the explosion. That kind of sucks, but the mission that this skips is really not that long of a mission. It's one of the shortest missions that you can fail to, to skip, I guess. So, as long as you're holding an on mission zero call, you're good to go. So now you can start Black Project. Hopefully it's between 20 and 6 on the clock. 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. And we're going to start Black Project. To start Black Project, you're going to enter the marker, let go of the phone call. As soon as the cutscene is loaded in, it has to fade in uh, a little bit. You can't let go immediately. It's just kind of like wait half a second before letting go of tab. Then hold down the... So I let go of tab, hold down the skip phone call button. As soon as the text disappears from the bottom of the screen, spam skip, and the mission is duped. As you can see, there's two sets of armor there. So it's definitely duped correctly. What's that noise? 
And this is a stealth mission, so we're obviously being very stealthy by just sprinting as much as possible. Sliding is your best friend here. Gonna run up here, gonna get the minigun and the armor if you need it. Not sure why I stopped to kill this guy, I never do this. Jump over the right. Gonna take a beating here, but that's fine. Just sliding. Try to take this guy out, got him. Gonna take this guy out. And I decide I want to go down here and get the armor and the health. Might as well get the health too, right? If you play well, you won't have to stop to get the armor and the health. Try to shoot these guys. Not a big deal if they live and get some shots off on you. You're going to get armor here anyway. Grab the key card, hit this marker. Code red. Code red. What in the world am I doing? All right, All here we clear out some of the guys. You have to be kind of careful about your minigun ammo. You have 200 and we want to make that last quite a while. Here we run down until we are facing the east. Gonna run at the center of this. And then jump, and you're going to land on the jetpack. Sometimes it'll take some fall damage, sometimes not. But you don't have to run all the way down the stairs. You can jump from that height and very easily live. If you want to, you can go low and grab this armor here. That was duped. We already took one copy of it, but now we have the second copy we can take. I like to do it because St. Mark's Bistro you can lose a lot of health and armor on. So it's either pick it up now or pick it up at the beginning of St. Mark's Bistro, for the most part. Sometimes you can get away with not getting either one. And now we're flying to the tan marker to finish the mission where we'll get hey, hey, Car uh, Carl, Carl, dude, dude, man, man. So inevitably, if you watch a lot of speedruns of San Andreas, you're going to see somebody do the YOLO jump in Black Project, and I used to be able to do it quite a bit, even consistently, I would say, but since I've abandoned it, I just tried to do it about 15 times and failed it every time. Here is Faulux's PB in which he does the jump absolutely flawlessly. You can see he's lining up with a spot on the wall and jumps, and he makes it all the way to the bottom without taking damage. Very inconsistent for me now, even consistently not working. So the truth does not give you a ride, but there is a Sanchez here. So take the Sanchez. I drive slowly off this edge here to stay on the bike. And now we're driving over to the Rustler again, pick it up and fly it over to Caligula's to pick up the last Caligula's mission, which is St. Mark's Bistro. You need to take two phone calls before you actually start St. Mark's Bistro. So we'll take one before we get in the Rustler and then one after we get out of the Rustler. This actually is what is going to unlock the mission. If you try to get there without taking any calls, the mission will be locked. So I get off early since I have to take a phone call anyway. Miss the, the phone call jump there. Cool. So we took one call. It can be hard to take off here. Sometimes it, it's just really hard to take off here. This rustler it needs a decent amount of speed. If you're having a lot of trouble taking off here, going this direction, you could turn to the right and take off to the right and then just turn around in the air. It's a bit slower, but safer for sure. A lot of billboards low to the ground that don't render in until you have already blown up by crashing into them. So I fly high. 
especially above the baseball diamond. There's, I think, two billboards there. One that I've crashed into before. If you die during any part of this, you lose your zero star, which is a big issue. A lot of trees here. Uh, wow, where am I going? Well, that was a horrible... Okay. Let me see if I can find a clip of me doing that well, because that was just dreadful. Take another phone call and start St. Mark's Bistro. Hopefully I can find a good clip of that, because that was just, just awful. Oh my goodness. Big chokes. Sometimes you choke, guys. It just happens. I don't know what to say other than I'll find a better clip. Not sure why I'm jumping. Just out of habit, I guess. Don't jump. It's faster to just sprint. You start St. Mark's Bistro. Your vehicle despawns whatever you took here. Oh, wait, no, you, dro you dropped out of the plane. There's no vehicle. But if you do take a vehicle, it despawns. So we get into some vehicle, whatever. And we drive over to the airport. Now, I took the armor at the end of Black Project so that I would have plenty of armor here. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm, I am I spaghettied getting out of the plane, so we have to get the armor again. But that's good, because now I can show you where the armor is. The armor is behind the plane, and to the left, sort of along the fence. actually parked on top of it but you can still grab it big hitbox to grab so now we get into the plane and we're gonna fly to the east to Liberty City the tan marker on the map and this is a very long flight pretty boring flight we'll go ahead and speed it up here So make sure your height is correct to hit this marker. If it's way off, you'll actually miss the marker. A couple ways to do this section. You can shoot these guys or throw a satchel over this banister, then go hide from the satchel blast, blow it up, and that'll kill most of the guys as well as guys underneath you that you really don't want to deal with. We're going to use the minigun slide. And to do the minigun slide, because you're not allowed to crouch with a minigun, you actually crouch with the sniper rifle and then switch weapons as you're doing the slide animation. And we get out here. I like to just shoot these guys with the sniper rifle because the best sniper this world's ever... Best sniper... Best sniper this world's ever seen. And flying back to Las Venturas. So, a little more talk about the, the slide trick. With the minigun, you switch to your sniper rifle, you crouch. As you start to sprint forward and aim, you switch to your minigun, and that'll let you minigun slide. It's something that's going to be a little tricky, and you'll have to practice it if you are new to the game. But just grab yourself a sniper rifle and a minigun, sit around in the Grove Street or something like that and just keep attempting to do it. Or yeah, just load a save where I already have those things. Saves, by the way, are out. Working on a new save tool as well to inject saves with the UI, much like Josh's save tool. But mine's PowerShell based. This flight is shorter to get back rather than, you know, the one to get to Liberty City took forever, but this one's much shorter. CJ101 out of Liberty City requesting final approach to Los Venturas International. Over. Flight CJ101, you are clear for landing on runway 3. So we land on runway 18L, even though he said runway 3. We're going to land right here. 
You're gonna take off. And I like to fly to the left here. You have to come to a complete stop for the mission to end. So come to a complete stop, then we fly back up. Go to the left here. Fly along this road and then jump out right in front of the four dragons. You can take a call here if you want. You could also just shoot to cancel it. It's not necessary. Save here for health. Not worried about armor. We're going to pick up armor immediately in the next mission. Enter the marker, home in the hills. If you can pause buffer to skip dialogue, you can skip dialogue here while you're waiting for these guys to jump out. I do not have that capability. Again, generally that's probably to do with playing the game in full screen, depends on your graphics card, things like that. V-Sync I've heard. Although V-Sync just limits frame rate, I think. Or maybe I'm wrong about what V-Sync actually is. Careful not to pull your parachute too late and die. Luckily we did just save, so it wouldn't be that bad. Pulled it egregiously early. Do not get in a car here. It will reset the AI to shoot you way more accurately. You can take a bike here. So I could have taken that bike, but decided not to. It'd actually be very beneficial to take the bike because it would make this next jump much easier because you could just jump off of the motorcycle. But here we're going to save a little stamina by jumping rather than super sprinting. We're going to come at this angle, this slight angle, jump, and then pause buffer. This is a jump, a pause buffer jump that's going to take a little while to figure out exactly how to do it. But again, just practice it. You don't have to be in the mission to practice this jump. You can do this by loading the vertical bird save. It would probably be the best one. Well, no, vertical bird loads you into the mission. But load a save that's near there and you can just keep practicing that jump. It's just pause buffering. You can also satchel jump up here. I don't like doing that because if you fail it once, you just lost health for no reason. So now we're just waiting for the triads. As I see them start to get very close to landing, I run across through these guys. Once it says take the triads inside the mansion, I fall down here and we enter the, the building. You have to wait until it says take the triads inside before you actually enter. So here we're supposed to be minigun sliding. Yep, there we go, minigun sliding. Again, we're trying to save. Hopefully you can end this mission with about eh, 40 minigun ammo, maybe around there, at least. You chose the wrong house to rob, fool. You don't have to kill everybody. You're not going to be able to kill Big Papa. Don't bother shooting him. He's invincible at this point. He also teleports around, clearly. If right here you're pretty low, you could stop sliding here and shoot these last two guys. These are the guys that are going to do usually the most damage to you. Missed that guy, but got plenty of health, so not worried about it. Switch to your satchels. Easier to run with satchels. You can actually sprint with them, and you can't do that with the minigun. You're going to jump to the lower ledge on the left there, on the left side of the screen. The lower ledge, and then climb up to shoot with the minigun. If you jump to the higher ledge, it takes a lot longer to climb the animation, and it makes it harder to make the shot. So, the lower ledge here. Shorter animation than this ledge. Switch to your minigun. Blam! Blow up Big Papa, and you have just beaten... Last Venturis, speedrun route. A couple bad things can happen here during this mission, but there's backup. So let's say you're awful at shooting. Oh, uh, no, I missed. Switch back to your satchel, sprint up to the road. Look and see if he goes to the left or right at the fork. If he goes to the left, you can shoot him here still. You got so many chances to shoot this guy. Hopefully you have lots of minigun ammo still. Again, we're trying to end with about 30 to 40 at least. Run across this field. You got another chance to shoot him here. If you were too slow or you missed, you have realistically one more chance to shoot him. And that is right here. He could also go across the bridge, which would be easier. Now here is the, here's what will happen if you miss and he goes to the right at the fork. 
So again, maybe you can shoot him here. If not, he gets behind that hill, which very much obfuscates your view of him. So you'll just run around onto this balcony here. Following him on the minimap, he'll come out here. He loads far away. You could shoot him there. Or shoot him down there. And those are the backup strats. Vertical bird is right there. The marker's not there, but that's how you start. Vertical bird right there. And now we're into RTLS, Return to Los Santos. Good job!